You have to be an entrepreneur when you make your first move. Even to look at that, it's a very entrepreneurial thing. This is your half of the board, and this is their half of the board over there. This is the opposition. The board was my life, my career. The opposition is failure. You're watching Jazz Night in America. I'm Christian McBride. Tonight, we're featuring pianist Eric Lewis, who you might know as Elu. Eric came to New York in the 90s and became Wynton Marcellus' pianist at Jazz and Lincoln Center, not to mention other legends like Cassandra Wilson, Roy Hargrove, and the late Elvin Jones. But the whole time, Eric was also working on his chess game. And down in Washington Square Park, there were a bunch of chess hustlers. This Russian guy who was known as Dr. Zhivago, or Russian Paul, he called me Amadeus. Hey, Amadeus. <laughs> ah, Amadeus is here. Amadeus wasn't exactly Mozart on the chessboard, though. At 10 bucks a game, Eric won a lot of debt. I mean, lots. They were all reading the New York Times when the New York Times reported that I had won the Monk competition. And they were like, oh, you won 10 grand. You owe us seven, so welcome back. With a prestigious award from the Thelonious Monk competition, Eric expected to hear from some record companies, too. The aftermath of that competition was I didn't get a record deal, which is what I thought I was going to get or thought I was supposed to get. I came to New York to be like Winton, not to just work for him. There's no more visible a spot in jazz than to be part of the Jazz at Lincoln Center crew in that family, and especially as a rhythm section player in the inner circle, you know? So then, is this as far as I can go? I'm not getting any help to cross over. How can I ever have my own career or whatever? You're dealing with conflict resolution. You're dealing with opposite forces. You're dealing with vision. Now, Zugzwang, to instantly get very more technical, it's your turn to move, but you don't really have any good moves. Zugzwang itself is the moment when you're stuck and you have no good options. You are now in Zugzwang. You're in the Zug. Eric's career was in the Zug. He had the gig of a lifetime, but it wasn't leading to opportunities under his own name. So, with his future in stalemate, he decided to try a new direction. Here's a taste of what came next, a cover of Heartbeats, written by a Swedish electronic duo called The Knife.
How shallow were the reasons that I didn't get a deal? I mean, I won the Monk competition. Let's not forget that. I did win it. I did tour with Elvin Jones. I did graduate from Manhattan School of Music. I did record six albums with Winton. So what was wrong with my resume? You know what I'm saying? Like, sanity check. Who's crazy here? Is it me or them? If the jazz cats aren't gonna screw around with me, the jazz world, then, you know, F them, and I'll deal with the pop world. I'm going to go into a field of music that is totally alien to you guys, with no alliances, and kill it. Eric Lewis began playing mainstream rock songs. He ditched the piano bench and started calling himself Elu. I'm playing Coldplay, I'm playing The Killers, I'm playing some alternative rock stuff, I'm playing Nirvana. it rock jazz. He made all these music videos, played on a TED Talk, and put out his own records on his own label. This is all part of the hustle. This is all part of the technique involved, which is also why I called it rock jazz, because that's what jazz musicians always did. They take songs people knew back in Gershwin's time and improvise through them. But also with Sweet Home Alabama, it's me doing it standing and with armor on, and on America's Got Talent and tearing the roof off the place. All of a sudden, people got hip to Elu, people he probably never expected to pose with. But some of the jazz cats weren't too keen on the rock jazz thing. Some even called him crazy. I really did it now. I totally alienated myself from the jazz world, but now, come to find out, I've got very few advantages in this world here. In addition to being the only black guy in the room, I'm also old. I also don't know what rock is. I've got a lot of work to do <laughs> to really do this. The rock jazz was enhancing my capacity to play straight ahead because of the demands inherent in rocking for people by myself and also understand how to parse myself and edit myself in the improvisation process, understanding how people are used to hearing hooks and how people are used to hearing certain types of format and order in music and then taking that and bringing it to the jazz when I would improvise and, you know, all these different kind of things.
Thank you. Quirk work. Quirk work. Quirk work. Quirk work. Now with jazz, I can get back to my sweet spot. That particular piece of unfinished business. Elu's talking about making a new jazz album called And to the Republic. And to the Republic, I'm referring to the Jazz Republic. They need stars. You know, there's some good cash to be pulled out of the jazz game. How do I get to that paper? Make a name for myself over here. And then whether they like me or not, they're gonna have me because I've got pull. That's how shallow their game became. So I adjusted. You can tell Elu's thought this through. He made sure to pick the baddest cats for his trio. I reached out to Tane and Veal because they're the best. When it comes to playing in all kinds of time patterns and stuff like that, I can rely upon Tane. Veal, the bottom end, huge. Same deal. Man, why'd y'all put me in this? Is this, is this where they making a jazz record? <laughs> when I saw Tane was on the gig, you know we had to talk football. I, I'm just hoping our lifetime, we see an Eagle Steelers Super Bowl. We gonna have the biggest party ever, ever had. It's gonna be hilarious. We, we should pick a neutral spot. We should go to, to uh, Hershey. <laughs> football aside, we're here to talk about this record. It seems that this particular recording, stylistically speaking, kind of exemplifies what you tried to get away from with the straight ahead thing. Because, I mean, you, you talked about rock jazz, but this doesn't sound like a rock jazz record to me. No, that's why this record is called And To The Republic. Like, the whole concept is that I wasn't crazy because the whole time that I was doing all the rock, I was still four o'clock in the morning at Smalls jamming with the kids. I was still at Cleopatra's Needle while I would, you know, be hanging out with supermodels. I'm on a yacht with a billionaire and Naomi Campbell half naked and chilling. And it's like, well, you know, let me take this plane on back and then, oh yeah, it's four o'clock and shit. <laughs> let me stop by the Needle. Let's see if anybody has done something brilliant yet. Oh no, well, well just let me keep on working on my rhythm changes. And so on the day when I return, like the Lion King, boom, hey, it seems like I'm back, but I never left anywhere. I just had to go make sure that my cheddar was right. Now, let me see if I figured out yet how to make a nice jazz album. And that brings us back to the show. The day before we crashed their studio session, Elu and the band were playing some of this music at none other than Jazz in Lincoln Center.
All right, let's hear it for E. Lou, ladies and gentlemen. You go, Eric. You're killing it, brother. You can hear more music from this concert on our radio show. Check your local listings or visit npr.org slash jazzmate. I'm Christian McBride, and thanks for watching.